This weekend marks 50 years since the Apollo 11 moon landing, uh, when American astronaut Neil Armstrong took one stall, uh, small step uh, for man, one giant leap fell for mankind. Morgan Brennan joins us from where it all began. I was talking, Morgan, about that building behind you, that it, it's impossible to describe the size of that. Uh, it, if, one way to look, if you look at the birds flying around up at the top, they look literally like specks. That, that's, it's, I think it's like the biggest building in the world or something, or the... I mean, the Pentagon is, but it's Ooh. absolutely huge, that building. It's very cool, very impressive. It is, it is huge, it is vast, and it is storied. It is mired in history. So when Apollo 11 blasted off from here, uh, it was from here, Kennedy Space Center, 50 years ago. That mission cinched America's dominance in space. And in the 50 years since, that's still seen as the peak of American space flight. But now... We are at the precipice of a new era, and this is one that Chad Anderson, the CEO of Early Stage Investment from Space Angels, refers to as an entrepreneurial space age. We've gone from a dozen privately funded companies in the world to now 476 companies today. They've raised $22 billion of equity capital over that period of time. Um, and so we really have a robust uh, market economy happening right now. Morgan Stanley estimates that the space economy could top, top a trillion dollars by 2040, and there are estimates that go even higher than that. Now, Elon Musk's SpaceX has really led the way, pioneering reusable rockets that are drastically driving down launch costs. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, which actually has a rocket factory right down the road from here, is also poised to become a major player in this sector. But overall, here is the key takeaway. While it is these private companies, it is commercial space that is really forging these new innovations, companies are in large part doing it alongside the government. And that is perhaps over when you look at the Apollo program 50 years ago versus where we're at in space here in the U.S. now, that is perhaps the biggest change. So whereas NASA historically laid out the vision, they paid contractors to build and then they owned the hardware outright, the agency is increasingly adopting a model in which it helps fund company spacecraft and then essentially be able to pay for the services or to lease out those spacecraft as and when it needs it. But guys, that business model, that idea of a public-private partnership uh, is really in focus right now because the Trump administration is looking to bring humans back to the moon, do so on a very aggressive timeline, and that work with commercial space is going to be key to seeing something like that actually transpire. We're going to be talking about all of this a lot more as the day goes on. All right. I, I, I'm going to really, this is all useless info, but I, I really got some good stuff here, um, uh, Morgan. Number one, it's a VAB, Vehicle Assembly Building, but it used yep. to be the Vertical Assembly Building because they actually assembled the Saturn rockets vertically, so that's <laughs> what it used to be called. It's got 3,664,000 cubic meters, which is one of the largest buildings in the world by volume. It is the largest single-story building in the world. That makes sense. Because there's only one story. And the tallest building outside of, uh, outside of an urban area uh, around it. And when you're there, it's just unbelievable to, to, to see the size and scope of that. Thing. It is. It, yeah, it's cool. Anyway, if you, if you get a chance. You know, I went on that, that thing that you get in and the gut does all that, and I was sick for the next three hours seriously and i was i, I tried to because my kids did it i said i'm gonna stay on this thing for a while like I, like on one of those bulls riding a bull and i did it and i almost didn't recover i almost really didn't for the rest of the day anyway thank you uh morgan brennan um that that was a nice dance if you could do that i did again. you <laughs> saw them did, were you able to see the do you remember i, I the, went there when i was a kid no but do you remember neil when he walked on the yes, moon? you did. do okay yeah. i think no, we're the only one we're the only ones you here that yet. uh that, that remember yeah, that. I thought it was cool. I can tell you it actually happened, yeah. in case anyone's <laughs> out there wondering. Well, I saw it on TV, so I wasn't there, there. The flag was yeah. not being no, it wasn't buffeted in the by wind. wind. No. No. no, it was uh, because the, the thing didn't extend all right, the way. Right, the string, the, the, the pole. The pole that yeah. they had I'm to impressed set the whole with the thing dancing, Yeah, are you? <laughs> You're easily impressed. After all that info, <laughs> all, all you guys really, uh, it wasn't really a dance. It was, I don't know what it was. <laughs>